everybody. This is our first video since the technology problems began. So I'm glad they're solved. The last time I talked about how I got into astrology. This time, interestingly enough, I'm going to do something on astrology, even though it's really not on astrology, but it's usual, utilizing astrology to um, help illuminate a situation. Because that's often how I use astrology. And um, uh, it's helping to illuminate something that happened today, which is that Jupiter conjuncted Pluto for the second time in a round of three during this year of 2020. So I decided I'd start to talk about the Jupiter-Pluto conjunction and the Saturn-Jupiter-Pluto conjunction, which is the whole thing is these three planets that are operating all year long, all within, you know, seven degrees of each other all the time, sometimes closer than others. And so we found out very soon after January when it started what this would be like. We didn't know what it would be, but we knew it would be portentous. As a matter of fact, I even did a little talk to our, um, our dinner group here, which meets once a week, on the coming Saturn-Pluto conjunction and get ready, get prepared, whatever that meant, none, nobody knew. And then COVID came, the pandemic came. And then, you know, everything's gone haywire since. So, so we're right in the middle of it. It's certainly not over by any stretch of the imagination. Now, this conjunction is operating in the sign of Capricorn. And that's what I want to focus on is Capricorn and the various aspects of Capricorn, what it's all about. Capricorn is the sign that follows Sagittarius, which is the sign of vision, perspective. Okay, large perspectives on life, the philosophy, theology, and so forth. Capricorn wants to ground that vision, wants to make it real, wants to put it into the earth. Okay, that's the goal of Capricorn. As a matter of fact, the word goal is a very Capricornian word. And that's what I want to focus on today is Capricorn goals and Capricorn structures and the relationship, the dynamic between the two. And uh, I want to focus it during this time that Saturn and Pluto are conjunct in Capricorn with Jupiter, having to do with the, the really the, re, the destruction and restructuring of old forms, have to do with Capricorn, to enable the life force, which has to do with Pluto, to flow more freely. And so that goes at every level, whether we're talking about uh, microscopic, or, you know, uh, global, or of course, personal. So let's really focus on the personal. Okay, so the pandemic occurred and everybody all of a sudden was at home. Oh my God, what am I gonna do with my life? You know, my life was structured in a certain way because of work. The goals that I had were just to do that day's work and to get money for it and then to pay my bills. That's, that's mostly, that's what people were doing before COVID happened. So COVID happened and so they're home, or now what? I've noticed that a lot more projects happened during the time that uh, COVID was really on. So a lot of people were doing, you know, cleaning up, that's what we were doing here, or renovating or, you know, painting a room or whatever they were doing, something to occupy their time. A, a goal that they had which was now personal, real, and they were structuring their time to fulfill that goal. So that's what I wanna talk about here is how we have to have goals in order to have a re meaningful structure. And the two are often, they, they intertwine with one another in various ways. Now, during the pandemic, there was one guy who said, I saw, I saw him online, he said, boy, I was doing online education at home and then I found myself getting up later and later in the morning and it's like finally I just I just couldn't do it I thought I could do it but I just can't do it and he was depressed unable to do anything another person who happens to be my housemate said to me not very long ago well I'm gonna go back to work that's good because now I'll my, my time will be structured so even though he doesn't really want to there's a part of him that does but mainly it's because the structure then is there okay because it wasn't there before and he found himself at loose ends a lot of the time, even though he'd have some projects to do. Okay, so 
this whole business of having goals is what is missing in our culture. Um, notice how uh, old people, for example, they have structure. The structure is the routines that they have going day after day after day, a certain kind of routine. Uh, notice the routines people have when they go to work, which I mentioned before. Notice the routines people have when they have serious addictions of one kind or another, where you know you have little bitty routines, bigger routines, and so forth. But what's the goal of all this? To keep oneself sick? To keep oneself from really accomplishing anything? I think it's really important that we stop and look and say, what are my goals? What is my intent? Let me structure something so that it meets with my intent. So what is my intent, my goal? And that is where we really have to pay attention because we're not taught that. We're not taught that, except to go with the structures of society, whatever they are. Entrepreneurs know how to do that. Entrepreneurs have this understanding that they set their own goals. Now, people that work for a living by working for someone else and getting a regular paycheck and so forth, don't set their own goals, as I said before. And they, you know, they don't trust that the universe will provide for them if they don't live within a structure that already exists that was created by someone else. The entrepreneurial attitude is one, ultimately, that goes beyond Saturn, which is the structure, into Pluto, which is to appreciate and be attuned with and be immersed in Pluto, which is the life force itself. So Saturn is goals, Saturn is structure. The goals that you set that are within this immersive uh, situation that we all live that is natural, human society builds up culture which has certain structures and then goals within that structure that normally people, unless they are operating on their own as sovereign beings, they usually have structures with goals that other people have set for them. So if we can go back and go to what is my goal, what is my goal in any particular situation, then how can I structure my life to achieve that goal? Um, so here's an example. When I was a kid, and I probably mentioned this before because it was a big deal in my life, where I wanted a horse. And really, when you look at it, it was a very Plutonian need because I wanted to rekindle my own life force and I wanted to do it through a horse, so I wouldn't have said that then. And I was determined to get one, and my father said no. And then uh, after me, I badgered him enough, he finally said, okay, you do the dishes for one full year and I'll get you the horse. So I had my goal, which was to get the horse. I structured my life. That very day, I went and put a 1 through 365 on a, uh, you know, some kind of big piece of paper and start marking off the days. And so I had my structure to accomplish my goal. I mean, I wasn't into washing the dishes, but I was if that's what I got for it. Okay, so I'm quite used to the idea of setting goals for myself and then have structures that accomplish those goals. Another one is the one that I that I made a video of, of this, um, you know, my chai tea elixir, which really has to do with my goal of having my own pr health be primary in my life. My own biological health is the most important thing, is the most important thing. If I don't have that, then I can't do anything else. I certainly can't serve society at all if I'm just constantly focused on what next is going wrong with myself. So, and I'm gonna come back to that at the end too because I just made a new discovery which is very Saturn, very Capricorn, and very interesting, and other people might benefit from as well. Okay, now the big, the big uh, goal that I have at this point, which I'm just really amazed by that I, have, that I set this goal and that is so important to me um, that it kind of blows my mind and that's what I call my recapitulation project, which I might have mentioned, I don't know, but it's, I know it's a multi-year project because of the nature of the processes that I'm involved with and the structure that will hold these processes and 
I didn't really realize how big it was when I started. I really didn't have a structure. I just started. I just started nosing around. What I'm talking about is nosing around in the all the various things I've been writing since 1985 or so, and even before that, but especially since I got a computer, I've been writing essays voluminously, continuously. It's like what I do in life. And, um, and then when I went back and looked at them, I would say 98% of them are really worth it. They're, they're still good. I'm, I'm shocked because I used to have this attitude about myself that I was a complete fool until five minutes ago. Okay? That's, what, that's how I thought. I was a complete fool until five minutes ago. I finally figured it out. Well, now I'm realizing, yeah, I had my moments of being a fool, but most of the time I was really on my own path with my own trajectory. And it's become very clear as I get older. And I think anybody who listens to this or who watches this that isn't old won't understand so much as anybody who listens to it and is old or getting older and getting older in a conscious manner by reviewing their life, the various arcs of meaning that developed, that develop through time, and they continuously develop. It's never over. So just to tell you, the structure that I developed for my goal of recapitulating my entire life, which means setting up an online archive of all these essays with categories and making some of them out of ebooks, some of them audiobooks, and so forth. Um, the structure that I finally uh, need, needed, which is just kind of classic and hilarious, which is an Excel spreadsheet, which I hate doing Excel spreadsheet, but my God, what a wonderful Saturn function that performs for me. So every time I, sometimes I have to retype these things too, retype an essay. Then I put it in the Excel sheet. I say, yes, it's been retyped. It's from this particular collection. Um, this is what I still need to know about it, or, or whatever. And um, I'm now up to 334 entries into my Excel sheet that has to do with the recapitulation of my entire writing life. So I'm quite used to the idea of setting goals and creating structures to fulfill those goals. And what is surprising to me, and I think is really important for anyone who is um, getting older is the more we do set personal goals which are really important to us the fuller our life becomes the fuller the, the richer the more meaningful our life becomes uh, I, I can't stress that enough it's just a wonderful thing so finally back to so remember goals and structure they're both Saturn functions we have a Saturn Pluto conjunction this year I think I mentioned that in the beginning didn't I Saturn function this year, that's Saturn Pluto function with Jupiter that's going to happen all year long. And we are reorganizing ourselves. We are restructuring life. We are figuring out what forms work, what forms don't work anymore. What forms are really unnecessary? What, what are just absolutely inhibiting our life force? Because the life force is Pluto. How can we allow more of the life force to be flowing through whatever structures we create? So this recapitulation project, by the way, allows a huge amount of the life force in me to flow through in a way that can be shared, which is really a wonderful thing. Okay, so what I want to go back right now to this business of the primary, the primary purpose in my life of, of goals, or the primary goal is to maintain my health, my, my physical, emotional, uh, spiritual health. I have to maintain it or I can't do anything else. So, I just discovered, and it was the day before Jupiter-Pluto conjuncted, which is today. So Jupiter expands whatever Pluto's about, and of course Pluto is a Saturn too. I just discovered a, a product, which you know, I'd heard about and I hadn't really paid much attention to it, but it's called, and a lot of people use it now, it's called collagen. And so I looked it up. It's like, it's good for skin, hair, teeth, bones, joints. And guess what? These are all, all of these parts of our body are uh, ruled by Saturn, okay? Ruled by Saturn, which is in Capricorn during this time. It's most um, important place because it, it rules Capricorn. So I discovered that yesterday. 
and I just started drinking it last night. So I have my chai tea all day long, and then I drink my collagen at night. Unless I have bone broth, which I also do, but not in these months, more in the winter months, because that also has collagen in it. So it's very good for you, and um, it's, it's certainly helping me fulfill my primary goal of keeping my body tuned, my body tuned as, as long as possible, so that I can share who I am with the world and receive you know, this wonderful blessings that I'm constantly getting from the world. So, that's all I get. That's all I got. I hope that's helpful. Thanks. Is that okay? Hi again. I didn't know that I was going to be doing this, but when I found out that was only 15 minutes long, plus there was stuff I didn't really get to that I didn't know that I, I wanted to get to it. So I decided, okay, I'll do this again, just for five minutes or less. Number one quotes that are interesting to me in this context of goals and structure. Uh, my own teacher said to me a long time ago in my 20s, remember routine builds character. So whatever are the habitual structures we have in our life, that's what we're going to end up as. So they like they build form gradually. Form is another Capricorn concept and it has to it is structure basically. Form is structure. So they build the structure that will be relatively permanent as you allow the life force to flow through that in only certain sort of ways depending on what structure you build. So routines then become extremely important. And I want to also stress again that goals are the things that make routines important because if you have a goal just to get through the day then you know what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? And that's I think what COVID has really helped a lot of people recognize that they want to do more than just, you know, just exist and just do mindless routines. So the other thing is about addictions, which would be routines that are extremely strong and are hard to break. I found out a long time ago, because I'm an addictive personality, that I can choose either good addictions or bad addictions. And that means, what's the goal of each one? The goal of a bad addiction is probably not conscious, but it's to keep yourself in a certain place which doesn't feel good. The goal of a good addiction is no, normally very conscious. You want to do something that will help you improve your life in some way or other. So, for example, it, rather than smoke, which is a long story, uh, my, my story of smoking, I finally gave it up. And for the first um, year, I gave myself another bad addiction, which is sugar, just because I knew the subconscious was what was addicted. And, and I couldn't take it back without it finally going, oh, I want that, I want that. Please let me have a cigarette again. So I gave it sugar instead, because knowing that would be very easy for me to quit sugar, which it was after one year. And so good addictions then would be routines that have to do with keeping your strength up for me, for example, when I say that my primary goal is to maintain my health so that I can do other things, so that I can have goals which um, can be actually utilized, can actually fulfilled. Okay, so for example, I do, I walk for four miles a day with my puppy in the morning. I also do three types of Qigong exercises in the morning, and then I do also around four o'clock, I do yoga, Qigong, and Tai Chi, that's around, uh, it's about 45 minutes worth. So I do about two hours of what I call physical culture a day, and it's definitely an addiction. If I don't do it, I really notice it, and I always do it, because that's what helps me, and I know that. Okay, okay, so a couple of quotes besides the routine builds character. Here's another one. It's not really a quote, it's what I remember from the quote. When Tolstoy was 18, he had, he set in his diary a goal for life, a goal for the next few years, a goal for the next year, a goal for the next few months, a goal for next week, a goal for today, and so on. So he was extremely structured and goal-oriented. And, um, you know, sometimes that makes a lot of sense. Okay. So, uh, several other things. First of all, I guess I mispronounced the word, col I said collagen, and it's col collagen, right? Collagen, collagen, collagen. Okay, also, um, in the back, I noticed 
I, I don't usually look at these again, but I looked at this one and it had this strange thing poking out. So I will show it to you. It's one of my goddesses. I don't know where I got this. <laughs> it's pretty peculiar, isn't it? It's some, some artist did that. My favorite goddess, however, is this one, which I got at Knossos in Greece. See the snake goddess. Snake is actually a goddess symbol. Well, remember, Eve, Eve uh, went with the snake. She said, the snake said, eat the apple, for goodness sakes. Get, the, get some knowledge in you. Okay, and then one other thing. Uh, you should know that even though this is a, uh, this is a, a podcast on Capricorn, I do not work in a very Capricorn way. Yeah, I have goals, yeah, I have structure, but my way of working is extremely intuitive. I may do notes like I did for this. I did notes. Maybe I'll get to stuff on there. Maybe I won't. I probably will, or at least some of it. But I tend to be familiarize myself with what I'm doing and then just let the energy flow through me. Hopefully the structures that I've created at this point are you know, adequate for the life force, the life energy to move in the way that uh, it's directed. Okay. Thanks.